The country is still dealing with fallout from the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Ahead, the latest on the debate from both sides of the aisle. Working for you. This is ABC 15 News at 11. First at 11, a man is dead tonight after being shot in a North Florence community. Police blocked a portion of North Commander Street as they investigated the deadly shooting. If you have been out the last few days, you're watching Watch Fox News at 10 with Brittany Breeding, weather with meteorologist Joe Spear, and sports with Matt Vereen, where we put local first starts right now. Thanks for joining us for Watch Fox News at 10. I'm Brittany Breeding. We begin tonight with breaking news. A man is injured after a shooting in Columbia. Police tweeted out this photo about an hour ago. Of him. And the finish line was here in Mount Pleasant. Hear about their long journey and their goal for a cure. And later, we continue to follow the January 6th hearings. Find out what is expected for the final two scheduled testimonies this week. Live from ABC News 4 in Charleston, this is ABC News 4 at 6. Good evening and welcome to ABC News 4 at 6. I'm Floriana Boardman. First tonight, thunderstorms are rolling in and with that flooding. A flood watch has been issued across the low country. Storm the questions they want answered in his murder case. Plus, more accounts from the January 6 hearings. Please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol. The hearings continue this week. Who the public could hear from for the first time. And the abortion battle continues across the country and right here in Virginia. What one Republican wants to see happen in the Commonwealth and how abortion advocates are responding. News coverage you can count on. This is ABC 13 News at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Cynthia Beasley. After a man was shot and killed in a Rustburg Church parking lot, the family... Well, thanks for staying up late with us tonight on 13 News Now at 11. I'm Eugene Daniel, and this person right over my shoulder here is meteorologist <laughs> Francis Payton, who's been tracking a lot of wet weather the last two days. A lot of wet weather. Tonight on your 5 News at 10, COVID cases and hospitalizations are rising across the country, which you need to know as we head into another summer surge. And time is running out for public comments on a block grant in Fayetteville. We'll talk about the budget to help low and middle income residents with housing ahead of a meeting happening this week. But first, thanks for joining us here for your 5 News at 10. I'm Michael Wilson. 21 year old Eric Navarreyes is facing an attempted capital murder charge. Local authorities investigating a shooting in Springdale. The victim's condition as a suspect sits behind bars. Lawmakers set to release new testimony in a January 6th public hearing this week. What we can learn as the investigation into the Capitol attack continues. I just straight up bawled my eyes out. Plus, a woman experiencing the symptoms of long COVID tries an experimental treatment. See the effects as she shares her story. Live. Local, late breaking. This is 4029 News at 9 on the Arkansas CW. A man is in the hospital tonight after a shooting in Springdale. Thanks for joining us. I'm Paul Petit. We'll have more on that story in just a moment. But now at 10, alarming living conditions at one Benson apartment complex. I cannot tell you how it's broken me financially, mentally, emotionally, my children crying. The legality behind renting in Arkansas and what residents have the power to do to change it. Plus, educators across the country expressing concern in a learning gap caused by the pandemic. We highlight one organization making an effort to help Little Rock students. And the summer heat really starts to return tomorrow as we get to 96. How hot does it get this week? We look at it next. The news starts now. From the station that's on your side, this is Channel 7 News at 10. Good evening. We begin tonight in Benton, where tenants at an apartment complex are at their wits' end. For On ABC.
Smoke billowed from a plane moments after it landed at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Left, or two separate right, as brakes are on fire. Left brakes are on fire. The fear from those on board. I seen people started getting up and rushing to the front of the plane. Stay seated, stay seated, we do not have to back there enough. And what officials say caused the blaze. A family frustrated after their loved one's murder. There's evil people out in the world. They're pleased to the public and police in their push to solve his case and bring someone to justice. All new on WSB Tonight. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Michelle Newell. Justin Wilfon has the night off. We begin with breaking news. Right now, there is a large police standoff in Northeast Atlanta for Checkers is the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Trust us to help you plan ahead and stay weather ready. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News primetime at 10 p.m. starts now. Thanks for joining us at 10 here on the ATL. Here's what we have coming up for you this Sunday. The very latest on a murder at a local gas station. You're going to hear what happened as a man was killed while putting air in his car's tires. Plus, covering southeast Georgia and the low country. WGCL 22 News at 6 starts now. Happening right now at 6, soccer star hit and run. How the Statesboro community is remembering a Tormenta FC player who lost his life near the Georgia Southern campus on Saturday. Plus, caught on camera, a nightmare unfolding on the runway in Atlanta as a plane's landing gear catches fire. The shocking video from a passenger. And with Roe v. Wade overturned, states continue to pass stricter abortion laws. Hear from a South Carolina solicitor on what the state's new fetal heartbeat law means for women. Thank you for joining us for WJCL 22 News at 6. I'm Brooke Butler. Well, it was another gloomy, stormy day. Check out the downpours Pooler saw today. The rain really coming down there. And here's a new developments, more death and destruction in Russia's war on Ukraine. Now, one of former President Trump's biggest supporters makes a last minute decision to cooperate with the January 6th commission and yet another milestone for Macon's blight fight coming tomorrow morning. Plus one middle Georgia woman who believes strongly we should all do more leading by example. You got to work hard, you got to give back and don't expect people to always give you anything. Then a hero send off for some little leaguers in middle Georgia making history. Live from downtown Macon, this is WGXA News at 10. Good Sunday evening to you, everyone, and welcome to WGXA News at 10. I'm Greg Lloyd. My colleague and friend Brittany Miller has the night off. Let's start this Sunday evening off with weather and meteorologist Ryan Mirando joining us now. And Ryan, just as you said, those pop up summer storms visited middle Georgia throughout the weekend, and you say that rain is going to continue for the work week. Yeah, Greg, the rain is not going anywhere anytime soon. Just look at all the rain we have now. The front that we've been talking about for the at 11. We now know the name of a weekend drowning victim. We tell you what officials say happened at Lake Tobasaki. Plus, this weekend, the Akron community continues to push for answers in the death of Jalen Walker. How Walker's family is getting involved and we just stayed on line until the last drop. 22 years ago today, the Macon Water Authority opened a new treatment plant. But what led to that? We'll take a look back on the flood of 1994. 13 WMAZ News at 11 starts now. Hello, I'm Molly Jett. Thank you for joining us. New information tonight and a story we've been following. The Georgia ABC 6 News at 5.30 starts right now with Weather First. Good evening, everyone. 5.30 now on this Sunday evening was a fairly active morning for weather in our area, mainly with that one line of thunderstorms that we saw that you can see there that really left right around noonish or so. so well, doing just about anything outdoors today was a good idea, including heading up the shore to Heritage Days in two harbors, live music, food, classic cars, and much more, and much of it continues tomorrow. You know, the baby formula shortage has caused families with infants to scramble, some to even panic. But tonight, news that an end to the short supply might be in sight. And however a culture cares for its elders is said to be a reflection on what they value. Tonight, a salute and a thank you to a Northland Veterans Home serving our veterans for three decades. This is WDIO News at 10. 
Saturday. Good evening. I'm Darren Danielson. Glad to have you with us on this Saturday night. For decades, a Minnesota veterans home has been caring for our heroes. And today. Right now at 10, opening statements start tomorrow in the trial of the man accused of killing a youth baseball coach. What makes this case so complex and what prosecutors need to do to convict. Then Minnesota State Patrol ramping up its efforts to put the brakes on street racing in the Twin Cities. How the first weekend went. Plus, Tony Oliva is soon going into the Baseball Hall of Fame and a member of his Cuban family will be there to witness the huge achievement. The threat for severe weather continues to diminish, but still some storms for Monday. A look at the full forecast for the upcoming week, which starts cooler. Care 11 News at 10 starts now. We start tonight, though, with some breaking news out of Apple Valley. Two people were shot just north of Valley Middle School on Oriole Drive. This happening about 630. We now know. Now at 930, the trial of a former youth wrestling coach charged with criminal sexual conduct is expected to start this week in Scott County. Prosecutors say Mustafa Shabazz sexually abused a young girl he coached. Just the pleasant feel doesn't last as heat and humidity return this week when temperatures rise and when we could see a chance for storms. And police investigate a break in at a New Hampshire historical site. The unusual items Thebes ran away with. No one covers New Hampshire like we do. WMUR News 9 at 10 starts now. Well, take a look at this. Smoke billowing up and above Manchester this afternoon. You could see and smell that smoke from many parts around the city. Crews there responding to an apartment fire. From the WKYC studios, this is Go. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday, 9 o'clock. We hope you're starting your day off with a nice little cup of coffee somewhere looking out of this beautiful Cleveland skyline. I'm Isabel Lawrence, joined by the chief, Betsy Kling, in for Peyton Domsky. And what a picture-perfect start to our Sunday, Betsy. We can't complain about stuff really like can't. this, right? This is just great. And I know... Calls for calm. You know, as we continue this fight... Um, right now it's about healing. As downtown Akron recovers from days of protests over the police shooting of Jalen Walker, Emma Henderson shows us how healing has begun. Collapse concerns, a local apartment building suddenly condemned. Basically everybody had like 24 hours to get all their stuff out of here. What led to the evacuation of dozens of tenants now without homes? Drop. Filling up is getting cheaper. What's behind falling gas prices and how much lower could they go? And wild for miles. Look who rolled up to the Cavs Summer League game in full uniform. Nick Camino has the dunk that has fans buzzing. Live from WKYC Studios, this is What's Next. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us for What's Next. I'm Lena Bai. And I'm Jason Michael. Tonight, all eyes are on the city of Akron as days of tension and violence taper off in the wake of the deadly police shooting of Jalen Walker. City three young lives lost far too soon. A heartbroken family making plans to bury three little girls who died in a fire. Their message to the community tonight. And last week, we got swamped. Will there be any rain at all this week? And I'm Clay Hall, OSU star quarterback C.J. Stroud, proving to be a leader on the field and in the community. I go one-on-one -on -one with the uh, great Buckeye tonight, getting insight on his efforts to make a difference here in Central Ohio. And a focus on health, a major push underway this weekend to promote a healthy lifestyle in minority communities. Those stories and breaking news as it happens right now. 6 News at 11 on your side starts now and we do start tonight with new information in connection with a deadly shooting investigation on the east side of the city. We've been following this story for a few days now. Right now, police are on the hunt for a 16 year old suspect in connection with this case. Take a look at this video. We were there not long after police got that call. In Only on 10 TV, police reveal surprising new details in a murder case from this past week. And tonight, a community gathers to remember a teenager gunned down what we're learning about him. Good evening.
evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Lindsay Mills. New tonight at 11, three firefighters are in the hospital after responding to a deadly Ross County crash. Ohio. Welcome to WTOL 11 News at 11. I'm Tatiana Cash. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. We've got our meteorologist John Birchfield here with us. John, it was sunny all weekend, refreshing breeze. But is that summer heat coming back? Yeah, Tatiana, we're going to crank up the heat tomorrow. It's going to be a 90 degree day with that. Prediction isn't a perfect science, but nailed the forecast with Tyler, Wetzel, Noble, Marshall County having that chance for some evening rain. We'll tell you when it moves out ahead. News 9 is everywhere. This is News 9 at 6. When you think of an outdoor summer market, fresh fruits, vegetables, and other organic items may come to mind. That's And a body found in the Great Miami River earlier this morning. The latest from the investigation that links the recovered body to a missing man. Plus... The Montgomery County Fair returns today, celebrating 170 years. All the sights and sounds you can see if you attend this week. Live on ABC 22, this is Dayton 24-7 Now News. Dozens gathering at Baumberger Park today protesting the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Good evening, I'm Bryn Caswell. This protest follows President Biden's recently signed executive order protecting abortion rights. Many A regional art competition taking place in Kingsport, where you can view the artist's creations. And protesters rallying in two local cities today on opposing sides of the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Plus, a popular festival happening in our region will take you to this year's Sunflower Festival. From WCYB, this is News 5, tonight at 11. and thanks for joining us for News 5 tonight at 11. I'm Kristen Kwan. A boil water notice has been issued for those in Coburn, Virginia. Officials say Coburn residents need to use boiled tap water. Now at 10, a Memphis police officer shot in the line of duty. What happened moments before the shooting in Hickory Hill and the slew of charges one man is now facing. Plus, this is not the first time it happened. It happened multiple times. Residents in an East Memphis neighborhood are scared after a car crashed into a home. The changes they're pleading for tonight. And John ja Morant is looking to the NBA season. Aaron Wilson shares which two rookies could be friendly competition for the superstar. ABC 24 News at 10 starts right now. After a small break today, this week is heating up. Meteorologist Chelsea Chandler is joining me now. Chelsea. News Channel 9 Weekend starts right now. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Christy Kalkak now. Well A march for women's rights. Pro-abortion advocates rallied in downtown Coeur d'Alene today, protesting the Supreme Court's recent overturning of Roe v. Wade, what they had to say about Idaho's future. After a sunny and warm weekend, I'm tracking some hot temperatures for the week ahead. And it's almost game time for the Women's Military Soccer World Cup happening right here in Spokane. Tonight, we check out the final practices before the international contest starts. Thanks for wrapping up your Sunday night with us here on Creme 2 News at 11. I'm Cody Proctor. In Monday at 7 on KIMA. The only local news teams taking action for you. KIMA Keeper Action News starts now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Samantha Spitz. A Yakima coffee shop is out more than $2,500 after...
Thanks for joining us tonight at 9. I'm Nixon Norman. Just two days ago, people in Limestone County on Tonight on NBC 15 News at 5, an update tonight from health officials in Mobile as coronavirus cases slowly tick upwards. Remembering a hero. It just has your own pins and needles. The funeral and procession for fallen Bibb County Sheriff's Deputy Brad Johnson. Salary bump. Doing things like stay bonuses or retention bonuses. Why some companies are considering a mid-year salary bump to retain employees. NBC 15 News at 5 starts now. We begin tonight with breaking news. Two people are dead and one is injured after a shooting near a Milwaukee grocery store. The shooting. The latest information on a alleged kidnapping involving a five year old girl in St. Clair County that ended with a police chase through Pinson. Ukrainian athletes competing at the World Games speak out on the condition in their home country right now as we uh, near five months since Russia invaded there. And game on, Team USA faces off against Italy at the Hoover Met after the game was rained out in yesterday's storm. And we have a much quieter radar compared to this time yesterday. Still tracking a few isolated showers, though. We'll talk more about this and we'll look ahead towards your forecast for the work week coming up in just a few. This is ABC 3340 News Weekend. Today, Asheville police are investigating an alleged kidnapping that ended in a car chase just before noon. Good evening, I'm Stoney Sharp. Some very tense moments at a gas station in St. Clair County. Now on WVTM 13 News at 10. What a nasty night across Birmingham. Heavy rain flooding several streets across the area. This is a picture from the St. Clair County EMA from earlier, where you can see there a lot of flooding covering the roadways. Leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 530. I love doing stuff with his kids. Even his nieces and nephews. Give us a shirt off his back if you need it, you know what I mean? Tonight, Milwaukee's Elroy Grocery Store is back open following a shootout that left two people dead. 12 News' Gabriela Garza with an exclusive interview with the family of a security guard killed in that shooting. If there are going to be guns in the vicinity of children, they should be properly stored. The man facing charges in the shooting death of a three-year-old appears in court. The allegations the homicide happened after several guns were left unsecured in a home. And raising money for those struggling in the midst of the war in Ukraine, the nonprofit working to purchase items that are difficult to access as the country continues to try and fend off Russian forces. Breaking news tonight, a homeowner injured following a house explosion in Glendale. The explosion... The White House is pushing back against the Supreme Court's ruling to overturn Roe versus Wade. We have the latest on the ongoing debate. And some experts expect voters to cross party lines in our upcoming elections, why some could be convinced to vote for their party's potential opponent. And a follow-up to the small alligator found in a Fond du Lac lake. We're going to check in on a reptile expo this weekend to see if gators make for good pets. And we'll tell you where the alligator is heading now. Balance News and severe weather coverage. This is Fox 11 News at 9. Well, after a weekend of sun, rain is moving into the area. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. It was a fairly nice weekend throughout the area with sunshine and a summer breeze. Very nice, but that is quickly changing now as rain and storms have moved into parts of the area. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Powell joins us now. And Patrick, uh, what can we expect from this batch of storms? Well, Mark, we've had some scattered showers and thunderstorms moving through the area late this afternoon and this evening. Now at 530, Phoenix police now searching for answers in the city's latest homicide. If it's good to say a man was found dead in the road early this morning near 23rd Avenue and Indian School. First responders pronounced the man dead at the scene. So far, detectives have not released any details
right now at 7, having their say. Every abortion isn't about a woman that was promiscuous and accidentally got pregnant. Abortion rights activists and some counter-protesters march through D.C. and say their summer of rage is far from over. And there are some things that you know, we need to hear from him about directly. We're two days away from the next January 6th committee hearing, and members say more witnesses, like the former White House counsel, are ready to put their stories on the record. If you are eligible for a vaccine, don't wait. Doctors warn the latest Omicron variant is more transmissible and possibly deadlier than previous strains. Wake Up Washington starts right now. Good morning and welcome into Wake Up Washington. I'm Marcella Robertson. Thanks so much for joining us on this Sunday morning. We'll We're getting you ready for the week ahead with your first look at your work week forecast. This is a live look outside. The weekend rain has cleared and it's a gorgeous night across the DMV. Now at 630, a string of church fires all on the same road. The investigation underway tonight. And we're drying out after a wet start to the weekend, but will the nice weather stay for your work week? A look at your forecast. And brand new testimony expected this week as the January 6th hearings continue. But we could hear from a former Trump White House counsel. 7 News on your side at 6.30 starts now. And first at 6.30, investigators in Montgomery County are trying to find out who's responsible for setting fires inside multiple churches. This all happening in the same area along the same road. Crews managed to put out the fires before. Hundreds showing up to the state capitol to protest the Roe v. Wade overruling. What local pro-choice activists are saying. Another gorgeous day, but it was hotter than yesterday. Highs in the upper 80s, but rain is back very soon. We're going to time that out. Coming up. And former White House counsel Pat Cipollone expected to speak at the January 6th hearings this week. Why his testimony could change the tides of the case. And also hobbyists from all across the state are gathering in Des Moines this weekend to share a love of Legos. Carson J.S. Reichardt has that scoop. You're watching Local 5 News. New tonight at 530, Iowa pro-choice activists are still pushing for abortion rights right here in Iowa. Hundreds of progress continues in the Beaverdale area following massive flooding a few years ago. Here from reproductive rallies continuing across the country over abortion rights, including right here in central Iowa, here from demonstrators as the reproductive rights rally. And we got back to feeling like the 90s here today. Not the beginning of a hot stretch, though. How soon storms are back instead ahead in your Storm Team 8 forecast. KCCI 8 News at 530 starts right now. Progress is being made after severe flooding created chaos in the roads of the Beaverdale area. It happened just over four years ago. You might remember back in 2018, heavy rains caused many roads to flood in Central Iowa, including the area near 44th Street. And from Boston's news leader, this is the 10 o'clock news on MeTV Boston. Taking a stand against hate in Hyde Park, the site of a future senior living community targeted signs for the LGBTQ plus friendly community riddled with hateful messages. Neighbors now unified in solidarity, standing up to say hate will not be tolerated. Hi everybody, I'm Sean Shire. And I'm Nathalie Pozo. New Center 5's Todd Kaskevich joins us live from Hyde Park with the community reaction tonight, Todd. We're tracking storms and damaging winds through Monday. Find out how that can impact your forecast. Those stories and so much more right now. Fox 42 News at 9 starts right now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight at 9. I'm Rich Rodriguez. Some Omaha youth have a long trip ahead of them as this week as they travel throughout the country. Fox 42 News. This is Newswatch 7 at 9 on MeTV Omaha. Good evening, I'm Julie Cornell. I'm Rob McCartney. Here's what's happening right now. A shakeup within the Nebraska Republican Party. More than a dozen leaders resign after the chairman's ousted by delegates from across the state. The final two hearings about the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol are this week. We're getting a preview of what the public will learn from new video testimony. And it's a busy wedding season thanks to pandemic cancellations and shortages. We have the advice from wedding planners to help your big day go smoothly. Live from 7 Burlington Station, this is Omaha's news leader. News Watch 7 on MeTV Omaha. 
at 9 p.m. The Republican Party of Nebraska is under new leadership. Republicans met in Kearney over the weekend and last night. Nearby showers are all across the Carolinas as we head into the afternoon. We'll track these out for you and we'll let you know how long they'll last. Coming up. I mean, if you don't stay positive, you're going to be tired. Define the odds. Meet this brave girl fighting a rare form of cancer. We'll show you her inspiring journey. And remembering the lives lost in a mass shooting on the 4th of July. New charges the Highland Park shooter could face and the emotional message from victims' families. Eyewitness News on Sunday continues right now. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Gina Esposito. And here we have, you know, just Ashley Cram against quite an active map there behind you, Ashley. Yeah, we have rain all across the Carolinas. That's Right now on WCNC Charlotte News at 11, demonstrations continue in the Queen City this weekend, two weeks after the Supreme Court voted in an historic ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade. More on the controversial debate that's sparking reaction from both sides. Plus, new technologies helping local law enforcement agencies solve crimes. What it is and how officers say it's helping them make more arrests. And making home ownership more accessible, what's being done to help more people in Charlotte achieve the American dream. Rallies and demonstrations continue to take place across the Carolinas this weekend, protesting the overturn of Roe v. Wade. Thanks for joining us tonight at 11. I'm Jane Monreal. People making their voices heard on the. Now on Sunrise, prices at the pump are finally dropping. We'll explain what's behind the trend and whether it'll stick around. And a rescue on the water, how one couple enjoying the weekend ran into some trouble. Fantastic weather once again out there across southern New England. This live from the village at Waterman Lake in Greenville. Not even a cloud in the sky and we're not even done with these conditions just yet. NBC 10 News Sunrise starts right now. Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, July 10th. I'm Tamara Sakarzik here with Anthony Makari. Thanks so much for waking up with us this morning. It's and another hot day out there as 150 million Americans prepare for highs above 90 degrees. Yeah, that includes us here in South Florida. I'll show you just how hot it will feel like, though, because it feel a whole lot hotter with that humidity. That's next on CBS 12 News this morning. You're watching CBS 12 News this morning. You sure are. Good morning. I'm Terry Hornstein. It is 8 a.m. on your Sunday. Hope your Sunday is getting off to a great start. Thank you so much for joining us. Live, local, late breaking. WPPF 25 News Mornings starts now. Right now, 8 o'clock, the potential for rain and storms are in the forecast today. Where and when to see heavier rains in your area coming up. This organization is just, I, I, they're, they're, they're genies. They're making wishes come true. Strangers coming together to give a veteran a brand new home. The mission of that organization that made it all possible. And a police chase in Miami ending right here in Palm Beach County. What led up to that miles long chase up Interstate 95? Good morning. I'm Taylor Hernandez. Thanks for waking up with us. It is Sunday, July 10th. This is Wink News at 10. Now on the Wink News night beat, a standoff between Collier County Sheriff's deputies and a barricaded armed suspect. Suspect what neighbors saw as shots were fired. And a flight from Florida catches fire as the wheels touch down. Passenger cell phone video puts you inside the cabin as the panic sets in. And a family says a big thank you to a deputy who acted fast and saved their baby's life while they still have fears for the future. There's some lingering showers across parts of southwest Florida. Thanks for joining us. I'm Taylor Wirtz. And I'm Justin Case. Wink News is the Weather Authority Meteorology. You're watching WTLV NBC 12, a First Coast News station. This is First Coast News on your side. Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for staying up late with us tonight for the news at 11 o'clock. I'm Destiny McKeever. As always, so glad to have you with us. We're going to get local breaking news alerts when you download the Channel 9 News app. The opinions and situations presented in the following paid program are those of the producers of the program and do not represent the editorial position of WRDQ or its affiliates. 
Ready for a little GMA-ish promo? Okay, here we go. GMA 7A every day with Robin, George, and Michael. That's how you start the day. Boom! This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 11. Coverage you can count on. An innovative interchange on I-4 is just hours away from opening in Osceola County. So this new design, not only does it move traffic through, but also enhances safety. Tonight, we're breaking down what drivers need to know. And FTA says that diverging diamonds should open up tomorrow. Good evening. They are proud to be an American. We meet some new citizens of the United States and what this day is all about to them. Plus, religious freedom. Why one former Disney cast member says the company violated her rights when she was fired. Local. Live. Late breaking. West 2 News starts now. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us here on West 2. I'm Luana Munoz. A fire at a Palm Bay apartment complex. Happening now at 11, a man is charged in connection with the death of a police officer in Detroit. Find out what he's accused of. We're tracking waves, air quality, and the potential for storms Monday. We're getting you up to speed in just a few minutes. And wildfires have burned nearly 1,600 acres in Yosemite Park. Now there's an urgent rush to save the thousand-year-old sequoia trees. I'm Elena Holland, and 13 on your side late night starts now. You're watching 13 on your side. Well, hi, good evening, West Michigan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're keeping an eye on some potentially dangerous conditions on the lakeshore heading into our Monday. We're I'm Keila Gaskins at the White House. Covering West Michigan to protect and alert you. This is News Channel 3, live at 11. Some took cover, others tried to escape. Witnesses describe a chaotic scene after a shooting at a basketball tournament in Kalamazoo. This is News 4 at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We start off tonight with some breaking news. We're learning a multi-car...